Salatu wa salamu ala rasulina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Nahamadu Allah ta'ala wa nasafiru wa shadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah Nashadu anna sayyidina muhammadan abduhu wa habibuhu wa rasuluh Sallallahu alihi wa ala alihi wa zwajihi Wa sahibat tabi khulafai rahshidin mahadi min ba'di wa rasulina tala tahkik Khususun mihum ala al-amati khulafai rasulina ala tahkik Umar al-mu'minin Hazreti Abu Bakr wa Umar al-Usman wa alihi وَعَلَى بَكَتْ صَعْبَتْ تَابِئِنْ رِدْوَنُ اللَّهِ تَعَلَىٰ عَلَيْهِ مَجْمَعِينَ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُ الْحَازِرُونَ تَكُ اللَّهِ تَعَلَىٰ وَتَئِنَّ اللَّهِ هَمَّ الَّذِينَ تَكُوَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ مُحْسِنُونَ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله والصحب أجمعين All praises are due to Allah Lord of the universes بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Exalted is He who sent down the Furqan upon his servant, that he may be a warner to the worlds. He, Allah, to whom belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth, he has not taken a son, and he has not had a partner in his dominion. It is he who has created each thing and determined it with a precise determination. Yet they have taken ilahs beside him, who create nothing, while they themselves are created, that have no control of harm or benefit to themselves, nor can they control death, nor life, nor resurrection. Sadaqallah al-Azim. May all peace and blessings be upon the giver of glad tidings, the warner, the guiding lamp, the leader to the straight path, the mercy to the universes, Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. And may peace and blessings be upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Osman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza. May peace and blessings be upon all the Sahaba Kiram. For the Holy Prophet said, Allah has chosen me, and He has chosen my companions for me. He has made some of them my deputies, my sons in law and my father's-in-law. Anyone who curses them has the curse of Allah on him and of the angels and of all people. Allah will not accept any exchange or compensation from such a person. May Allah have mercy on all of them. O believers, Ramazan came 
Ramazan left. We are in the days of Shawwal, counting and expecting to enter into the season of Hajj and to then present our sacrifices to our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramazan came with one of the most delicate, one of the most latif forms of worship that mankind performs, fasting. Because nobody knows if a man is fasting except the man himself. Nobody knows if you are staying away from eating and drinking. Only you know. Nobody knows if you are on the inside, you are struggling against anger, against pride, against jealousy, against stubbornness. Only you know. Only you know if you are fasting just as a ritual tradition or if you are fasting just to get reward or if you are fasting because you want the ridha of Allah. That is why the reward of fasting is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. And why the joy of fasting is experienced in the reunion with Allah. Fasting comes to teach the believer about the most subtle and secret connection between him and his Lord. That connection is sincerity, ikhlas. Two men were fasting. One man is fasting just out of tradition so that his family does not look down on him. He waits all day for the iftar time. His heart is full of wrong desires and wrong thinkings all day. The other man cannot wait to fast. During the fasting, he is thinking about the signs of his Lord. He is contemplating and making zikr. He is making shukr and is thinking about his faults and how to become better. From the outside, both men will look the same. They are not eating. But inside, it is the difference between the desert and the ocean. And that inward reality is between the person and Allah. This is why Hazrat Junaid al-Baghdadi Qadassul al-Sir is saying, sincerity is a secret between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his servant. Even the recording angels knows nothing of it to write it in the book of deeds. Shaitan doesn't know how to corrupt sincerity, nor is the ego even aware of it so that it could influence it. This sincerity, this is the ultimate goal of the believer. Hazrat Abu Ayyub al-Susi Sir is saying, Allah only desires sincerity in the deeds of his creatures. For a man to be sincere, he has to be awake. He has to be guarding his heart. He has to know what he is doing and he has to know why he is doing it. He has to continuously be awake to himself. Why am I doing this? Who am I doing it for? Because if someone does an action with sincerity, it may be his safety. If he does it with hypocrisy, it may be his curse. This is why Hazrat Ma'ruf al Khaki, Qadasullah Sir, radiallahu an, says Whoever acts in order to receive a reward, he is just a traitor. Whoever acts out of fear of the fire or wishing for Jannat, he is a slave. Whoever acts for the sake of Allah, he is one of the free men. And that is the highest rank. Our Shaykh Sahib al Sayyib is talking about the hiddenness of sincerity, saying, In this time, sincerity, that's the most important matter. First, you have to be sincere with yourself, your own self. Once you are sincere with yourself, you will be sincere with your Lord. I don't have to prove to anybody that I am sincere, nor are you going to have to prove. But you have to know that you are sincere with yourself and with your Lord. So that person who is sincere with himself and with his Lord, when he looks at you, he's going to know that you're sincere too. Because they're getting it from the same source. It's coming to everybody from the same place. Understand? When our book is going to be open on the Day of Judgment, 
that is going to show where our sincerity was. Why we did what we did. This is not something easy. This is something that is very dangerous because doing something for other than Allah's sake, it is not accepted in Divine Presence. Allah Jalla wa Ala is saying in the Hadith of Qudsi, I am the one, one who does not stand in need of any partner. If anyone does anything in which he associates anyone else with me, I shall abandon him and he belongs to what he has associated me with. The Holy Prophet is explaining the danger, saying, O people, beware of a certain manner of making shirk. Beware of a certain manner of making shirk, which is more undetectable than the footsteps of the ants. And then he made a dua saying, Ya Allah, we seek refuge in you from associating to you something which you know. And we beg forgiveness from you for associating to you something which we don't know. Amen. For the Muslims who say, oh, this is so simple, just pray up and down, just go make the Hajj, just be a good person. What is their answer to these words of Allah and His Prophet? The Sirat is not an easy road to walk. It is as thin as a hair and as sharp as a knife. People today have made a joke out of Allah's religion, but it is not a joke. It is a matter of eternal life. Being sincere is the only road to the Ridha of Allah. And being sincere is the most difficult thing. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq radiallahu an said, to struggle in an action until it becomes sincere is more difficult than performing the action itself. And sincerity is this, that you should not desire anyone to praise you for it except Allah. And intention is higher than the action. Indeed, intention is action itself. A sincere person cannot be fake because he knows who he is. To get sincerity, you have to be real with yourself. You have to say, I know how dirty I am. I know how far I am from what I should be doing. You understand your weakness. That is why Hazrat Abu Sulaiman al-Darani said, when the servant acts with sincerity, it cuts off most illusion and delusion from him. Because you are never going to trust yourself. You are never going to trust yourself. You're always looking to those hidden corners of your ego. You're always going to be looking for those hidden ant steps of hidden shirk. Even when you think you are sincere, you're going to doubt yourself. Hazrat al-Susi said, when people see sincerity in their sincerity, their sincerity is in need of sincerity. May Allah help us. O oh believers, you and I, we cannot do this ourselves. If we get a stomach ache, we don't diagnose ourselves and give ourselves the medicine. We don't trust ourselves to take care of our physical body. Are we so foolish that we're going to pretend that we know how to treat our spirits? We have guides. It is the divine protocol to send guides. Allah sent us guides. Those guides, those prophets, his friends, they are the sincere ones. They make us understand servanthood in our own language, not in their language. They have been sent as men so that we can associate with them. They sit with us, they speak with us, they eat with us, they pray with us so that we can follow them and walk to their goal. They laugh with us, they cry with us. And they are taking this delicate subject of sincerity and making it so that we can understand. Sultan al -Awliya. Shaykh Allahna Muhammad Nazim Adil Al Hakani Kadasallahu Sir is saying, Allah Almighty asks of His servants to worship with ikhlas, sincerity, purity. He asks for pure worship, which means to have a pure heart, a heart that has nothing in it but its Lord. Each of us knows which side of himself is not true. 
or which of his characters is not good. We must strive to have pure hearts. This is jihad. This is the struggle. To fight with one's bad characteristics and change them into good ones. Everything that occupies your heart and keeps you from your Lord makes your heart impure. You must try to keep everything away from your heart but Allah. We say that the heart is for Allah alone. Man is created for the love of Allah Almighty. Anytime you put your love in this dunya, it will be wasted. But if you put your love with Allah, with the Prophet, with your Shaykh, or with your fellow believers, you may find that love here and hereafter. It is never going to be wasted. Love is the most precious, most valuable, most expensive thing that the sons of Bani Adam have been given. <laughs> Do we want a simple test to check if we have that sincerity? Our Shaykh then is giving it to us. He's saying, check yourself. All these words that I'm saying apply to me and apply to those people who hears them. Check yourself. Find a place for you and say, am I a hypocrite or not? It doesn't matter. Be sincere with yourself. Leave everything else. Be sincere with yourself to say, which category am I in now? Then you will find out by yourself and then you'll be entering into that shocked station, understanding. That's what I am doing. Whatever you are doing is for you. If you're living in the way of Allah, it's for you. If you're living in the way of shaitan, then you only make shaitan happy. Nobody else. This is real. The words of Allah's friends, they are straight and they are real. Do we want to be sincere? Then first we must find every speck of hypocrisy in our hearts and we should root it out. To find sincerity, we have to first journey through the darkness that we have built in our hearts. Only then are we going to find the light of Iman on the other side. The guides sent by Allah, they are lights. They can guide us through the darkness that we have built up inside of ourselves. Without them, we are going to get lost. Without them, we are never going to find our way home. We are waiting for Qurban. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying about that sacrifice. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Neither their flesh reaches Allah, nor their blood, but it is your taqwa that reaches him. Sadaqallahu al-Azim. Sayyidina Imam al-Rabbani, Ahmad Farukir Sir Hindi Qadas Allah Sir, is explaining the sincerity of the friends of Allah who have sacrificed themselves to him, saying, the sincerity which is the result of effort and struggle is not permanent. In order to be permanent, it has to be natural and effortless. This occurs at the stage of absolute sincerity, certainty. Hence, whatever the awliya do, they do for the sake of Allah, not for themselves, because they have already sacrificed themselves to Allah. They do not have to purify their intentions in order to attain that sincerity. Their motives have already been purified through them finishing themselves to Allah. He who is still in love with his self does whatever he does for his own sake, whether he is aware of it or not. But when the love of the self disappears, and is replaced by the love of Allah. Whatever he does, he does for the sake of Allah. Oh believers, and there are people that are like that. They are still here. Follow them. Follow those who ask you no fee and are themselves rightly guided. Their life is an example of sincerity. Follow that example and gain the pleasure of Allah. We're asking our Lord to make us sincere. We're asking our Lord to make us to follow the sincere ones. We're asking our Lord to be real ones and to be far away from hypocrisy and illusions and delusions. We're asking to be in the association of the ones whom he loves in this life and in the next life, inshallah. Amen. Astaghfirullah. 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 Lazim. Lazim. La ilaha illa wa hiya qayyum wa tibulahim.
la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahul mulku wal hamdu kadir la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahul mulku wal hamdu kadir la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahul mulku wal hamdu la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna zalim la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna zalim la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna zalim subhan kudusun rabbun rabbun malaikatun wa rah subhan kudusun rabbun rabbun malaikatun wa rah subhan kudusun rabbun rabbun malaikatun wa rah inna dinna inna allah al-islam qad qam salah Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah.